movies can be a window into history for people. The filmmakers have tried their best to be as authentic and credible as possible. We felt that, that while we were telling a fictional story, um, the fact is that the backdrop was serious history. I like the uniqueness of entering an entirely different world, which is, which is real and feels real and is very different from the world that I'm a part of. I think it's always a, a tremendous challenge for a costume designer in terms of a period movie to represent the history correctly. When you hear the words Smithsonian Institute, you think serious, you think uh, important. My first trip to the Smithsonian kind of boils down to one moment. And when we went there, they had in a drawer a uniform from the American Revolution. And they took it out and they handed it to me. And as I was holding it, I noticed in the collar there was uh, sweat stains. That was the sweat to fight the war to win our country. <laughs> I mean, right there, that's the sweat, right there. It, it was really amazing. Uh, and I think that's, again, the, the value of the Smithsonian is uh, with them, history comes alive. This war will be fought not on the frontier or on some distant battlefield, but amongst us. The film opens in 1776 as the Declaration of Independence is about to be written when things look very, very dark for the Patriots. Big British victory at, at Camden. It looked like Cornwallis was going to move north with his army, link up with Clinton in New York, and annihilate Washington. These rustics are so inept. Nearly takes the honor out of victory. Nearly. <laughs> the largest number of casualties uh, in that Revolutionary War uh, was experienced by Americans, not by the British. The muskets were notoriously inaccurate, and, and the warfare of the time, the tactic of the time, meant that you lined up opposing lines and you just shot at each other until someone broke. One of the biggest challenges, obviously, in the movie was the, the armies. Every single uniform that you see in the movie is manufactured specifically for the Patriot. Deborah Scott, you know, who won the Oscar for Titanic, she is a stickler for details. I mean, she is into every stitch, every, I mean, things that, that you may never see, she cared an enormous amount about. The character of Gabriel, who's played by Heath Ledger, the first time we see him in his, his Continental uniform, it's the first time you really get to see the Continentals up close. There's so many details when you think of a men's garment. I mean, when you think of it today, you think, you know, pants and a shirt. And these things had gaiters and breeches and neck stocks, and there were so many bits and pieces. A big motivator to be in the Revolution was to get the jacket, because it was a jacket that you could wear in the summer and the winter. And many people fought because they were told that they would get a, a new uniform and a new set of boots each year. Of course, once they got the first one, they never got another one. The British, you know, they, they, were, they were fine. I mean, they cared about their uniforms and they had really gorgeous uh, attire. There were many different kinds of uniforms, again, in the British Army that we basically settled for one very strong look. The helmets, the helmets that I saw at the Smithsonian uh, were kind of kind of funky looking. I thought, wow, you, you, scary people wore the helmets that were this silly looking, but apparently they did. Uh, but yet, uh, once we put them on all of our actors, and you see these kind of long, bushy helmets, they actually they actually do seem intimidating after a while. You know, when you see a group of them riding forward. Would you like a lesson, sir, in the rules of war? Tavington, the uh, the Green Dragoon, played by Jason Isaacs, is loosely based on Banastra Tarleton, who was a Green Dragoon officer who um, was particularly noted for his brutal tactics. Jason is such a fine actor and has incredible presence, and so he put this uniform on, and he made it look macho and threatening. You really expect to hold Cornwallis here using just militia? Well, not me, you. Benjamin Martin is a composite character made up of uh, Thomas Sumter, Andrew Pickens, and Francis Marion, and a few bits and pieces from a number of other characters. Benjamin Martin is really the epitome of the colonists at the time. His garments, when he decides to go off and finally join up with the militia, his wearing the coat, the vest, the breeches, the boots, absolutely sort of the iconical thing of the time. These men, they're not the sort we need. They're exactly the sort we need. You've got American soldiers who are using squirrel guns 
who are using whatever they have. You've got farmers. Harry, they're not soldiers, they're farmers. They'd be better off letting the British just march through. And so these militiamen made the enormous sacrifice of keeping Cornwallis and his army around their homes. Having to fight in their backyards, losing families. South Carolina militia were classic guerrilla fighters. So now there's nothing to stop him from heading north to finish off Washington. Unless we can keep Cornwallis in the south until the French arrive. You actually trust the French to keep their word? Absolutely. There's a character in the film named Jean Villeneuve, who is very, very loosely based on Lafayette. Um, he's a French military officer who lost his family and um, seeks revenge, which is why he's volunteered to come to the colonies and help train the Patriot militia to fight against the Redcoats. Fire! Through our conversation with the Smithsonian, they made it very clear to us that there would be no America today were it not for the French. You could make a case that the, uh, the American Re Revolution began in the North, was waged in the South, and won by the French. Trust the French. Yes, trust the French. I mean, they financed, they supported us, and ultimately in Yorktown, they are the ones who surrounded Cornwallis by the sea, so he could not retreat. Before the final battle at the end of the movie, um, when Villeneuve comes out of his tent and he's all dressed up and ready for battle, it's really meant to show a few things. I mean, the flamboyance of his character. And also, I think, historically, it really was that way. I mean, they really had the dress uniform and the everyday uniform. And so we just completely went with it, and it's absolutely historically accurate that that's how he could have appeared. Um, and he plays it well. If I die, I will die well dressed. All bound slaves who give minimum one year service in the Continental Army will be granted freedom. The great and painful irony of the American Revolution is the fact that this was a war fought for freedom. So an integrated army fought to create our country, but then we didn't have an integrated army again until Korea. The British early on said that any American slaves who fought with the British would be granted their freedom. The blacks are fighting for the British side, assuming that they're going to get freedom, and there are blacks who are fighting for the Patriot side for the same reason, for freedom. Yeah! Occam is not just fighting as an individual. He's fighting for a larger community, for a larger cause. And even though Occam doesn't talk about it and the, and the movie doesn't sort of uh, elaborate on that, it's a reality of what's going on there. At the end of the film, when you see this uncompleted home. What we're trying to say is that the great task of the American Revolution is incomplete. And the fact that the two people that, that we see working on that home are the reformed bigot and the freed slave says that the greatest challenge in terms of liberty that we're facing as, as we try and finish that only framed house is dealing with slavery and its repercussions. My hope and prayer is that the sacrifices borne by so many will spawn and fulfill the promise of our new nation. And we thought if there was ever a story that was uniquely American, the American Revolution is it. What we hope the audience will take away with after seeing The Patriot is that, that the only way to protect your family is to protect the family of all men. I think the lesson is war is a horrible, horrible thing that should be avoided at all costs, and sometimes it's necessary. <laughs>